And then we put on the website, we put on our consultation form, but we start recording training sessions, Zoom sessions, and consultations. Great. Okay, okay. perfect. Um, so, been attacked by another dog, correct? Yes. And then has created a, a, some nervousness. Yeah. All right, so go ahead and fill me in. Um, so last, was it last July? Yeah, last yeah. July. Not the July we just had, the July before that. Okay. Um, we were just on a walk in our normal neighborhood. We live in like a little circle, so we usually just walk around the, the circle. And there was two off-leash dogs that we saw, um, and we saw they were out, so we kind of just went around the other way to avoid them. And we came back around the circle, and one of them just charged at him with his teeth bared, and they kind of got into it, and she ended up getting bit pretty bad okay. um, right on her knee. And so ever since then, he has been really, really skittish mm -hmm. around other dogs. Especially yeah. dogs. Um, like even, you know, if we see another dog on a walk and he sees them, you know, he starts to get, starts to growl, his hair stands up on his back. Um, We've been in the house lately, we've noticed that he like will growl aggressively towards dogs just even walk in front of our house. Yep. Okay. Um, and it's like, they're, they're at a decent amount of distance away from us, but even just seeing them, Smell. And he's usually pretty good around, I will say he's usually pretty good around people. Okay. Um, we did have, did have an incident a couple of weeks ago where... Which kind of prompted like our urgency. Yeah, it was like a, it was a little girl that came up and she was like pretty like in his space, like had her head like resting on top of his head and mm -hmm. he definitely did not like that and he kind of like growled and lunged backwards like he was trying to avoid her. Oh. Um, he didn't end up fighting her or anything. But... No. But it was enough to scare us that like, well, we have younger kids in our family that if like he doesn't feel comfortable around them, like we want to get that addressed too. Okay. So, um, he's never shown any other signs of like human aggression. I think he was just really like thrown off and it was kind of in his space. Yeah, for sure. He, uh, he does have some really good dog friends too that he gets along great with. Mm -hmm. um, so he has a couple, couple here. My sister got a dog, you know, after it happened. And the first initial meetup was pretty rough for the two of them, but then once they went on a walk together and kind of got used to each other, now they're great. They play fine really well with each other. So sure. yeah. it's pretty much just any anybody or anything new, really. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> what do you mean by rough? <coughs> um, like when we, when we first introduced him, like we put a muzzle on him just mm -hmm. to make sure nothing would happen. Yep. So we even did where like we stayed in the house because we thought maybe he was just being protective over us too since we were with him. Uh -huh. yeah. We had my mom and dad like do like a slow meet up and as soon as he saw her dog, you know, same thing, started growling, hair standing up, yeah. really like deep barking I would say. Okay. Yeah. But um, they like she started walking with her dog ahead of them and then they started following her and then eventually like they got up so they're next to each other and they're fine. Yeah. yeah. It's just like that first initial encounter that was interesting I would say. Yeah. Okay. How many friends does he have now would you say? Um Nosy Wrigley. I'd say about five. Yeah. Okay. About five. Yeah. How many of those after the incident? Uh five. Okay. Yeah, they were all after. Okay, cool. Um, and then, uh, goals that you, like, what you're wanting to achieve? Um, just, like, honestly, like, us sitting in the house, like, we just don't want him to bark at a dog outside. Like, something mm -hmm. as simple as that, like, even if it's, like, if we're on a walk or something, like, I just want him to, like, feel comfortable walking next to us and knowing that that dog on the other side of the street is not going to bother us. Yeah. Yeah, that would be the goal for me. It's just get him comfortable in that sense or like if we want to take him and like sit on a patio somewhere okay. yeah. and get it to, to the point where it's like if he sees a dog walk past on the sidewalk he's not going to like go crazy while we're just sitting there sure. you know, eating or just anything to get him really comfortable like I'm even fine like we he, he used to go to dog parks pretty regularly when he was a puppy before it happened and then ever since then we've been like uh, no, uh, no, no way not. and I'm honestly fine with not even going into one of those I just want him to walk comfortably when he sees another dog, just be fine with it. Just know it's going to leave him alone, and mm -hmm. he'll leave him alone, and that's fine with me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I know that he, like, like Cameron had said, um, before this had happened, we took him to a dog park, and he always kind of, like, gave us that vibe a little bit that he, like, there's some dog type of dogs that he, like, wanted to stay away from, mm -hmm. and which was fine, but, like, I want him to feel comfortable with, like, giving them, like, a warning sign that, like, he's not interested or, like, that he doesn't want them to be around him. Because okay. right now, I feel like his only defense is just, like, yeah, it's showing like, his teeth and, like, he's, it looks really bad. It's, like, zero to a hundred, like, 
just like that. Like he's fine, and then all of a sudden, you know, he sees one, and it's like instant, just sure going crazy. We actually had a couple weeks ago. We were walking again in the same area, and the neighbor's dog slipped his leash, slipped his leash and started running over. And so that he actually, you know, he was doing pretty well about listening to us um, and just saying like, we usually say no or hush. And he usually is pretty good, but you know, as soon as that dog came running over, they yes. kind of like all went out the window at that yeah, point. Yeah, which makes sense, right? It's like, I think once he gets going, it's like impossible to get him to calm down. Yeah, and that was probably like a flashback for him because it's the same thing that happened originally. So. Yeah, he was getting charged, though, for sure. Yeah. Um, anything else? Um, I like personally, like, I don't like ever since like the accident, like, I kind of feel like a little more timid around newer dogs, but like. I think he can kind of feed off my energy a little mm -hmm. bit. I'd like to learn like some new techniques of like how I can kind of like advocate for him and not sure. be like that. Because mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, like, I it's think a scary situation. We're both kind of like that. I now. think honestly, the biggest fear that we have is like just off leash dogs at this point. Because I've often thought like he's a pretty big dog. Like if another dog slips his leash and like comes charging over, like what am I supposed to do with him when he's going crazy and there's another dog that's like right there and they're gonna get into it? Yeah. yeah. Like it's not like I can just like pick, pick him up. up. <laughs> he's too big. Yeah. Sure. Okay. And that's stuff that we do cover. Um, I mean, it's obvious like FYI and then telling you that it's okay to defend your dog if you have to or let your dog defend himself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, because I've, I've had clients, I had one client, um, her pit bull in like the span of I think it was two years, got attacked by off-leash dogs five times. Oh my but, I mean gosh. attacked, not, not even like off-leash encounters, like she gets the dog got attacked five times. Wow. Like one time she was just walking and she heals her dog on the right side. And then uh, one of her neighbor's dogs just, you know, the, the fences that have like the, the thick wires. Yep. Yeah. The dog poked its head through, grabbed her dog and it just oh pulled him gosh. in. Oh yeah. my gosh. You know, like crazy shit like that. And I'm like, man, you have the worst luck. Oh. Um, so then like after she had trained with me, I told her like, you can absolutely defend your dog because look what happened when you did it. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, and there's lots of different ways of handling situations and you know, uh, but in my opinion, yes, you can defend your dog and, or you can let your dog defend himself and then help him defend himself. Yeah. yeah. Even if the dog is being friendly. Right. Mm -hmm. So because in his mind, he's going to go off of that first experience. Yep. Right. So, um, I'm not sure if you guys are aware, like with cops. Uh, they're trained to assume threat, right? So if they approach, let's say they pull you over for a traffic stop, like, you know, you're not bad people, but the yeah. dogs and the, the, the dog, the cops are going to show up thinking like, well, this might be Absolutely. a thing. Because yeah. Yeah. they can't predict, right? And there's like yeah. videos of, of cops doing that very thing where they just come up to the window and all of a sudden they're met with gunfire, yeah. right? So uh, that's a very primal way of thinking. And that's where your dog is because he's an animal. Yep. And he's going, if I see you charging at me, I have one to two seconds to make a decision and I'm going to defend my life. Right, so if he became defensive, he's not being aggressive, so to speak. He's using aggression to defend himself. Yep. Yeah. But that does not make him an aggressive dog. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, Absolutely. It does. Yeah, and um, we've tried a couple different things too, a couple different trainers. Mm -hmm. um, so we went through Bark Busters recently, like in May. They gave us this harness, which was kind of nice actually. We do like the harness because he walks a lot better with it. Okay. I feel like that's how we've kind of like worked on it's just yeah. like his walking and it didn't really address like the actual issues that we wanted. Well, and theirs were, their, the training that they did, it was more so like, um, like a correction with the harness or a carry a squirt bottle with you and squirt him when he starts to go or they gave us like the little uh, bee bag. bag that you throw on the ground and I know. honestly, yeah. it, it, <laughs> that it, is a nightmare just it, to it, find it, it in the house. And I would say, you know, in the house, mm -hmm. it's it works a little bit better because I think it's like very minimal distractions. But when you were on a walk, there's a lot more going on. It's impossible. Yeah. Correct. Squirt we bottle, he'll just like treat it as like a toy. And like, yeah, we try. Some dogs like, like it. Yeah, he tries to catch some yeah. water. He yes. loves water, so it's kind of useless. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm familiar with Barkbusters. Uh, anything else with the trainers that you, you've um, done? I mean, he's had like right before this happened, he had just finished his puppy classes okay. for. Yep. Basic level. Yeah, sure. so he knows the basic commands. Yeah. Sure. Um, we, I did, I, I called another guy and he kind of gave me a phone console and his recommendation was just like, well, you could, you know, give him some Benadryl or something to take the edge yeah. off. And I was like, well, I don't really want to do that with him every single day. Yeah. yeah. We're not really into like just drugs. Yeah, yeah, just <laughs> for the sake of doing it every yeah. single day. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was interesting for sure. 
the off leash dogs thing, it just drives me crazy now that we have him and he's kind of like that. Mm -hmm. Like other people around the neighborhood are like, oh, it's okay, you know, my dog's friendly. And I'm just like, just because yours is doesn't necessarily mean mine is. Exactly. Yeah. Like, and there's, there's a little chihuahua down across the road and he gets, he just like escapes the house, like I would say, I don't know, a couple times. Average, like once a month or so. Yeah, like once a month and sure. just go sprinting down the road. And sure. I'm just like, I don't day, if we're gonna be at fault for that if something was to like if he was to do something. Yeah, it's like my dog could literally like eat your dog. It's so small. And... Yeah. No, I I, I completely get it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hear this stuff all the time, so I'm like, yeah, people can be terrible sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. I've learned to um, uh, stay away from like dog beaches too. Like, uh -huh. um, so we're from Michigan, and most times we'll just drive back to Michigan to like go out to like a regular beach where there's like. Like it's very secluded and mm. there's no other dogs around. But sure. like, it'd be nice to like take him somewhere where there might be another dog and just so he can enjoy himself with yeah. the nice. Sure. Um, so we don't have to drive that far. I feel like me personally, I'm like always on the lookout for like dogs that are in the area when we're anywhere with them outside. Yeah. Sure. And I don't, I don't want to be like that the whole time. You know, we have them, so that would be great. Okay. Yep. Um, and I see you have an e-collar here. Yeah, I, so I actually, Maddie, um, mm -hmm. your nutritionist, I mm -hmm. think so it was, um, I follow her on Instagram, mm -hmm. and uh, I know that she had a dog tra for Rudder, yes. and I saw on your page that you recommended dog tra. Correct. Um, so I got the basic level one, but um, I don't know which one you wanted. You would so. need, yes. <laughs> so I'm glad you brought it, you've not opened it. Yeah, I, I opened it just to use the cooker, because I wanted to okay. see what the cooker looks like, but sure. I haven't used it at all because I didn't want to miss you. Okay, so uh, you'd want to return that that collar. Okay. okay. Good brand, obviously, right brand. Yeah. Um, uh, not enough output for his size. Okay. Okay, so he is a 70, 80 pound dog? Yeah, he's like 85 pounds. Okay. Yeah. So that collar is meant for 35 pound and under, I believe. <laughs> is that is it really? Yeah. No. Yeah. Oh, That's why when I saw it, I was like, yeah, we're going to have to exchange that. <laughs> he would be on the big boy collar. Okay. Yeah. Uh, which will provide you the information, it's the dog okay. to black edition. It's meant for 70 pound dogs and over. Um, and the reason why that's important is uh, there's different, uh, like there's e-collars for 15 pounds and under, 35 pounds and under, mm -hmm. 70 pounds and under, 70 pounds and over, okay? Oh, well, you're definitely the big one. Yeah. <laughs> so like what can happen is uh, if we have, like actually the client that just walked out right now, I don't know if you saw that dog was in an e-collar. Yeah. Um, so that, that was a consult as well. Worked with the previous trainer. Uh, that was a 70 pound dog with a 35 pound and under e collar. Oh. Yes. So then uh, there was an instance she told me about where her dog took off on her. Like it, it was reactive towards a car, so it took off, got off leash, and was chasing the car. That's her husband scary. had the e collar and was at max, and it took him a while before he actually stopped the dog. And the oh, reason is because there's not enough output. Yeah. Because So think of it as like boxing. You, we have like, if it's like a featherweight to a heavyweight, yeah. like there's a disadvantage there for Absolutely. Good, right? Same thing for your e-collar, okay? So you have like a featherweight to like a heavyweight, so to speak. Yeah. Um, so uh, did you get it like on Amazon or? Yeah. Okay, cool. So you should be able to return it. Way to get it. <laughs> yeah, you should be able to return it and stuff, no problem. Okay. Uh, and then when you do, if you do get the e-collar from uh, Amazon, mm -hmm. um, they've been sending the wrong model sometimes, uh -huh. okay? Because it's Amazon, like they don't know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we've had a handful of clients who were supposed to get the black edition, thought they ordered the black edition and Amazon sent them something different, oh, okay? Yeah. So then when I show up, I'm like, that's not the right collar. I'm like, well, I bought the black edition like you said. I'm like, are you sure? They're like, I paid $330. I'm like, yep, that's definitely the price of a black edition, but Amazon sent you the wrong thing, okay? Yeah. Huh. So uh, so if you do get it from Amazon, you just wanna make sure that your system does say black edition, okay? okay? So, and again, Maria will send you that information. Okay. Um, so uh, here, um, it's interesting with dogs. So obedience wise, dogs don't generalize things. Like sit at home, sit outside, and like sit at PetSmart are all different things. Mm -hmm. But if your dog has a negative experience, like attacked by an off leash dog, like the next day they're like, I hate all dogs. Yeah. You know, like they yeah. generalize exactly there. What it was it, like, yeah, right? it's like a switch. Yes, so not uncommon. So it's created distrust. Um, so what we need to do is kind of get him just kind of back in line um, and we do this through discipline, okay? Uh, with the e-collar, um, I like to think of it as like a bite on a button, so to speak. Okay. 
So we can do two things with the e-collar. We can teach them to do things, sit, stay, down, come, place, heel. And we can teach them not to do things like be reactive or growl or, or what have you, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, even here, like his pacing around and stuff, like he's a little bit anxious, like he's not been able to settle. Absolutely. Because yeah. if, if he had relaxed by now, he'd be laying down. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and we notice that especially when we go like to the brewery or something. Like a brewery or a patio. Yeah. Yes. Like he does not. He will not sit. He will just stand just like this the whole yes. time. Yes. He knows settle and all like those like sit commands and relax, but mm -hmm. like. And as soon as, soon as you, know, you get him in the like, as soon as you get him in the car, he like crashes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because he's exhausted. exhausted. Yeah. He's yeah. This is so tiring. Crazy. Yeah. You know, because he's like for especially for dogs standing for a period of time is is exhausting. Absolutely. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So. Strangely enough, what you might find is once you've done e-collar, he would finally lay down and relax. Mm. Like literally, like you, and we're not even telling him to settle. Like he will just literally just choose to relax because it teaches him how to turn off. Okay. okay? So when he goes outside, he's already going out on high alert because mm -hmm. he's going, I've been attacked by an off-leash dog in the neighborhood, right? Yeah. So it's already, he's going out and he's already, like it's, imagine for you as a human, Something happens either in your home or just outside your home, you're gonna be on edge for a bit, yeah, right? Absolutely. So, so for dogs, it's the same thing. So he's going out, he's anticipating there might be an off leash dog, so it kind of just keeps him on edge. Yeah. So it's it's counterintuitive to us to think that using an aversive tool will actually help a dog to relax, but mm -hmm. I see it all the time, every day, okay. with working with cases. So the first thing we would do here is, I know you talked about, they showed you how to do the leash corrections with the harness and like um, the leash walking stuff. Yeah. Um, that is the actual answer to a bulk of what you're dealing with. Okay. The issue is just how you've been approaching it, okay? Mm -hmm. um, so harnesses actually make reactivity worse. Mm -hmm. uh, harnesses, um, so dogs have this thing called opposition reflex. Are you familiar with that term? Mm -hmm. uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fancy word. All it means is when a dog feels pressure, they go against it. You pull back, they pull forward, that you that you pull forward, they pull back, you pull left, they pull right, they go I against the pressure. That. Okay. I mean that makes sense. So harnesses are meant for pulling, and I know this is a no pull harness, that's just an oxymoron because harnesses are made for pulling. <laughs> yeah. Right? Horses were harnesses to pull uh, uh, carriages, uh, huskies were harnesses to pull sleds. Right? Yeah. So the reason why they do front clip harness is it diverts the pulling power to the side. Because that's where his, his power is, it's in his chest. Yeah. Right? So right here, if you put a regular harness on him and you clip to the back, he would, you know, dig in with the front paws, pull forward, push forward with his back paws, and then he's got more leverage over you because your center of gravity is here. He's sure. lower, so you're right. going with him, okay? Yeah. So when he pulls, it diverts the power to the side, which gives you a little bit more leverage, okay? Yeah, he's strong when he pulls, that's for sure. Yes. Oh my gosh, yeah. So uh, we'd want to get rid of the harness. Um, it's not going to uh, be of any use to you. Uh, plus, once he's trained, you're not even going to need it. Like, you could, you could get up to off-leash if you wanted. Okay, mm -hmm. so here, our style of heel is very strict. Uh, when I take five steps, the dog takes five steps. We take three steps, they take three steps. When I stop, they automatically sit. Completely slack leash, and I don't care what the environment is. I don't care if we're surrounded by dogs. I don't care if we're in a Home Depot. I don't care if we're in the busiest park. Sure. Okay, we want that level of focus. And it sounds very complicated. It sounds like, man, it's gonna be a lot of work. It usually takes about 10 to 15 minutes. Okay, wow. with the right psychology and the right tools, of course. Yeah. Uh, so you're already a step ahead of everybody else because you're already going, I'm ready for e-collar, okay? Because so <laughs> that's the hardest part about this yeah. is just getting people comfortable with e-collar. Yeah. Now, did you happen to watch any of our videos? Um, I watched some of your like sessions like this okay, online. Cool. Um, but um, I know some of them are different. Yes, so, so um, for your reference, if you want to just kind of see this for yourself, lesson ones are always great to watch because no one knows what they're doing. And that's typically the dog at their worst. Okay, okay it's lesson one. So like yesterday I had a, 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 new, a Newfoundland or Newfoundland um, massive dog, yeah. overstimulated. Yeah, his best friend is a new yeah. Okay, very reactive dog, okay? Oh, wow. like, like towards people, towards dogs, right? Yeah, I know people are like, but they're like so like calm, not this one. Well, that's what they say about our golden. Yeah, so uh, by the end of the session, good. No problem, right? Wow. Yes, I know, and it sounds crazy, but it's because we have the right tools yeah. and the right psychology. So just because someone like that client who just left, who worked with the previous trainer with an e-collar, right, still having problems. Why? Because just because we're using e-collar doesn't mean it was the right uh, the, the right psychology, but also that the trainer put them on the wrong e-collar. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay, and that's a big, I get a lot of dogs that come in on e-collar, I'm like, yep, that's meant for a small dog. Yep, that's not the right collar. So, 
you know, we have to get them on the appropriate collar plus the appropriate psychology of how do we use it, yeah. and we make progress. Yeah. Okay, so we actually ordered this two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's um, just maybe a week ago. Um, but we were both afraid to open it because I didn't want it to be like something that like I didn't want to use it inappropriately and make it seem like I was like doing something wrong and then he would like be scared to do anything. So, sure. Because I feel like so my parents had it um, an e collar something from like TSC Tractor Spico. Okay. Growing up, <laughs> Probably not the greatest collar. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> no, it was, it was like twenty five dollars. I've heard of Tractor <laughs> Supply in a, in a long time. <laughs> and, oh my gosh. It, but like. I feel like they train our dog back home to like, like inappropriately with the collar, and mm -hmm. like I feel like yeah. I wanted to be trained appropriately. Yeah, they pretty much just fear it. Yeah. Yes, and that's what well, that's what most people think. They mo they usually think that this is a punisher, and it can be used as a punisher, yeah. but we think of it more as a communicator. Yeah. yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. and the way I, I approach training is different than a lot of trainers do. Um, because just because we are teaching as a communicator doesn't mean we can't be at a higher level. Mm -hmm. It's all about how we layer it in, okay? So the first thing that we always teach is the heel. Okay. Because when you put an e-collar on a dog and you press the button, if, they, if you have contact, um, they don't know what it is, their first instinct typically is to move and usually move away or run, okay? It's usually mm -hmm. flight response. Yeah. So heel is a moving behavior. You're walking with your dog. Mm -hmm. So when you kick in with the e-collar and he feels it, it allows him to respond and move in response to the collar. So he's still getting that ability to move in, in response, but we're teaching him how it turns on and how it turns off. Okay. Yeah. Plus most people, at least within the city, walk their dogs about three times a day to go potty because no one really has yards here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's three times a day, seven days a week that we're practicing this exercise. So it's, you're exposing him to it regularly. It's not something that we use when he's at his worst. Okay. Yeah. Which is like what a lot of people think. Yeah. So, cause he's not meant to have his muscle contracted. Um, so he needs more exposure to it to get comfortable with it. Okay. So the e-collar is a stressor because it is an aversive. So in order to get him over that stressor, we need to keep exposing him. Okay. Yeah. Uh, in the beginning, what we might see is an increase in his anxiety. Okay. okay? Because of the e-collar, mm -hmm. it may seem like you're making it worse. You're actually going to help him get better. Okay. So have you guys ever been skydiving? No. Oh, I'm terrified. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I ever will. Yeah. So, <laughs> let's say, for example, you went skydiving. Do you think you would just jump out the plane? No. Oh, definitely not. Right? Somebody would have to be, uh, they would have to literally push me out. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I think that's what they do. We can agree that's going to be stressful. Yeah. Okay. So, let's say you go skydiving once a year. You'd get kind of used to it, but I'm sure it'd take you a while, right? There's always be that initial hesitation. Yeah. Sure. But then you go once a month, and then once a week, and then once a day. And all of a sudden, it's easier and easier. You know, I'm sure like people in the military that have to pop out of planes, yeah. they have to drill it. They have to practice it and practice it and practice it to get them over that sure. initial yeah. anxiety. Same thing for your dog. So when we see our dog go under stress in response to what we're doing, our, our instinct is to release pressure and or uh, decrease how much we're using. We don't. We want to work them through it. We use it as needed. Okay. okay. So if he's giving me reasons to use the collar, I'm using the collar. I'm not going, please buddy, please do what I told you so I don't have to use the collar. Because yeah. now you're trying to give him a window to avoid the pressure sure. and you're going to keep him in, in limbo is what I say. Okay. okay. Yeah. So you're going to see an increase and then he gets exposed to it. That's what actually toughens him up is he's going, he's getting exposed to the stressor and he's like, I don't like this. He gets, uh, maybe gets flighty, maybe gets anxious and stuff like that. But you keep exposing him, exposing him, exposing him, and eventually he's like, oh, he's like, this ain't so bad. Yeah. I'll, he gets over it, okay? Mm -hmm. But not uncommon for people to try to lay off, okay? So um, dogs toughen up their puppies through physicality, mm -hmm. nipping and biting and poking and prodding, okay? And the puppy will be yipping and yelping and crying and all that stuff, trying to run away, and they'll pick him up and poke him some more yeah. to toughen him up. Mm -hmm. So you're essentially doing the same thing to him. Sure. Okay, but at the press of a button. So okay. when, um, so one of my first cases when I uh, when I started ten years or so ago, I uh, was a very sensitive, fear, uh, 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 fearful dog, very flighty. Thirty feet away, he'd already be trying to run away from you. Like he was super flighty. Oh, okay, wow. and everybody thought e collar was going to make him worse. E collar is actually what made him get better because wow. everybody was like, "Oh, he's so scared, leave him alone." I go, "No, like that's why he stays scared." Cause no one's willing to put them under enough pressure and work them through it. Yeah. And then, so like everybody was like giving them space. I took them and I tethered them to me for a day. 
Wow. Like you're not going to get away from me. No. Right. So, but so then, because he can only you can only stay uncomfortable for so long. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. At some point, you're like, let's say you get angry. You can only be angry for so long before you're like, whatever. Yeah. Right. And unless that thing happens, or or you're reminded, or you see the person who pissed you off, then you might trigger for a bit. Yeah. Sure. But eventually, it goes away. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So same thing for the dog. Okay. Right. So it's all about more exposure. Um, because if, if what I did didn't work, then I would think I wouldn't be here. But there's a lot of trainers that suck and they're still around. So I'm kind of like, I have no. <laughs> <laughs> so, but we, we want to see progress. Okay. So typically with reactivity stuff, it's usually around two weeks, one to two classes where we'll start to see the turnaround. Okay. If not like immediate. Um, so week one, we work on the, the foundation of heel, uh, how it turns on, how it turns off. I give you your homework, you go off and you practice. Okay. And if there's things that you know that he would be reactive to, my suggestion is that you expose him to those things. Okay. okay? Pending that it's safe. If it's an off leash dog that's not under control, yeah, keep right. your distance, right? Uh, by week two, you would be my feedback. Hey, Jesse, you know, our neighbor's dog came running up, but they have electronic fence, so he wouldn't cross, but he was barking. He did nothing. He just ignored it and kept walking. Oh, great. You let me know where we've made progress mm -hmm. or you might, you know, find a situation where he had a hard time and he was reactive and I go, okay, no big deal. We're going to work on a second half of heel. This is what you're going to do in those, um, in that kind of left what's left over of the reactivity to address it. Mm -hmm. I'll see you in a week. Okay? okay. Come back week three. How are we doing? Even better. You know, we, we feel like we're 90% there. We feel like we're 70% there, 30%. That kind of dictates how I move forward. Okay. okay? I don't think this is going to be difficult. I think this is going to be pretty straightforward, okay? Mm -hmm. Because he's in response to something. Yeah. Okay. He, 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 I get dogs that are just that way. You know, they've been reactive since they were a puppy. Yeah. And they've, they've been doing it for two years. He's, mm -hmm. he's reactive because he's lost trust. Yeah. Okay. So by, uh, uh, by the beginning of class three, we'll have a good handle on behaviorally how he's doing with the reactivity stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, we can jump into recall, which is off leash control. So like, let's say you want to take him somewhere like a beach yeah. and you see someone with their dog and you want your, and he's out there and that dog's coming your way and you want to pull him from that direction. You have a means of doing so. Okay. And the systems are fully waterproof. I was just going to say. Yes. Okay. The systems are fully waterproof, both your transmitter and your receiver. Oh. Okay. So you could be, you know, in a pool with a margarita and the remote around your neck. And he could be swimming in the pool with the e collar, it's perfectly fine. Okay. okay. Yeah, that would yeah, be, a recall call thing would be nice for he sure. He loves swimming. So, like, as long loves as it's it. waterproof, like, mm -hmm. that's perfect. Yeah, the recall thing would be great too. We still struggle with him, and like, we have a fence in the backyard, so we just let him out to go and sure. do whatever. Yeah. He is not good about coming back. Because he wants to sure he gets more time in. outside. Yeah. yeah, he wants to stay outside like all the time. <laughs> sure. So it, it it honestly probably it takes like both of us just to go out there and just kind of wrangle him back in. Because if you come try to get him, he just runs away and Correct. takes your plan with him. Correct. Yeah. So we cover recall. Uh, we we be doing that as early as the third class. Okay. Um, after that, um, it just depends on like how much control you're wanting. Uh, and then how he's doing behaviorally, um, the children thing. Um, so if I remember, if, so he was laying down and the child had their face in his face or they were laying on him. So we were eating dinner and he, like this lady came up with her two kids and, um, she came up and she reached like hand first to touch him. And then the other younger girl came up and she like started petting him back here. And at one point one of the girls like rested their head on here and one was touching back here mm -hmm. and that's when he like started giving like a little growl and then like just step back. Yeah. Thankfully he didn't lunge at her, mm -hmm. but I like that was enough to scare me to think that like no, like we can't have anybody come up to him. Okay. But I also think it was like the younger girl not knowing like properly where to touch the dog too. Yeah, it, that's a lot of pressure. Yeah. yeah. So imagine if like you know someone just came up to you while you're sitting and they're just like that close to you, right? Yeah. Uh, you would be like, what the hell are you doing? Yeah. Uh, and I know for dogs, you know, um, especially golden retrievers, there's this kind of thought process of every dog to love everyone and everything. Absolutely. And just like accept yeah. everything. Yeah. And that's not true. Yeah. I actually kind of like started crying one time when this guy, like, like it had, it was like right after we um, had the accident. Um, we were walking like on our usual nature trail and Miles was flipping out, of course, because he had a dog. And I pulled him aside and this guy said, 
well, that can't be a golden retriever because he's acting wild. And I said, well, it is a golden retriever and there's a reason why. But yes. he kept walking. It's like he didn't want to understand why. But I'm yeah. not going to like keep him at home. Not yeah. yeah, we don't I want to like, socialize. No, no, I get you. Yeah, for sure. And like I had, uh, we have two other golden retrievers that I've trained recently. One was Bo, who bit oh. the owner several times because he was a resource guard and they couldn't touch his collar. Oh. Yeah, he, 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 the, the, they had a great turnaround with him. Um, and then his, it was funny because then they were out at a, like a, at a cabin, you know, like out in Wisconsin or something. Yeah. And there was another golden retriever there that ended up attacking their dog, oh. right? And they're like, we got a guy to help you. Because coincidentally, that family lives in Chicago as well. Oh, wow. Oh you know, yeah. Oh my so, God. but it was funny because they were all, they were all proud because like our dog wasn't the bad dog. Like oh, he was God. actually the, you know, the, the shining star. And then we trained that. It was also another resource guard and also a dog that couldn't be touched around the collar. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was interesting. Two golden retrievers, same problem. Huh. Yeah. So breed doesn't matter. Any dog, yeah. any breed is capable of becoming aggressive. It's just a matter of, are they put in a situation in which they feel they need to, mm -hmm. okay? If a dog has a mouth and teeth, they can bite, is what I say, okay? Yeah. Makes so sense. Um, when it comes to that situation, that's a lot of pressure for a dog. And this was post the incident, is that correct? Yeah, yeah this yeah. was just a couple weeks ago. Okay, yeah, so, you know, I, I like even like, so right now how he's unsettled, yeah. the fact that he's already in a tense state, and mm -hmm. then you add in two kids as well, because I would think it's probably similar. Yeah. You, they're just adding more stress on an already stressed sure. out dog. Yeah, yeah which it's a lot different. Another. Like if yeah. he makes a, like if somebody has to pet him and he like acknowledges it and walks over to them, yep. he's like happy as can be. But if yep. somebody comes up to him without him giving permission first, yep. he is you can, not. You can just see him give like a, like he like hikes his head up and yep. like he's like looking. Yep. He's super expressive with his ears. Like yeah. you can tell if he's happy or sad or whatever by how high his ears are up, I think. Yeah. For sure. And like you said, because if he moves into the space, he's saying, okay, I trust you enough that I'm gonna come into your intimate space. Yep. As opposed to somebody randomly coming into his space. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, and um, you know, in terms of that, um, we can cover that. Okay. If you think that's something that's of a concern. Um, I mean, well, we have like, we have a few younger kids in our family, like our friend just had a baby and like I'd want him to feel comfortable if she was to come up to him. Mm -hmm. um, so it would be nice to address it because I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, we don't have any kids yet, but I want him to feel comfortable later on. Sure. Because I mean, he hasn't had a lot of exposure around kids either. Yeah, yet. sure. So when it comes to that, I have an exercise that I go over. It's very easy. Uh, it does take time because you have to like rinse and repeat and like keep you know doing it. Mm -hmm. um, now we can't make him like kids or all kids, yeah. right? But that's where being able to advocate for him, giving children instructions. Um, yeah. You know, th there's more that goes into it because um, you also want to think, like one thing that I tell my dog owners to do is um, when they have their own children, I'll tell them, have your own child ask permission to pet your own dog. And everybody always goes, why? I was, and I tell them because your child will treat other dogs the way they treat your dog, sure. yeah. the family dog. No, that's so true. So I had a client whose kids, um, they used to use their German Shepherd as like a step ladder. Oh gosh, they would I, step on it to oh, get to the I counter. I see those videos on like TikTok all the time of like kids like jumping on their yes. dog and stuff. Yes, and their uh, kid did it to their neighbor's uh, friend, uh, child's dog, whatever, got bit. Oh. I said, yeah, because they don't know any better. Yeah, well, the, the one, I'm like, just because a dog will tolerate it in the home, right, doesn't mean another dog will. But also, yeah. like, your child is thinking, well, I do this with this dog, why can I not do yeah. it with that dog? Because they're yeah. kids. Yeah. So by doing that, the child would then ask to for permission to pet other dogs, you know? And because people always are surprised about it, and they're like, oh, that makes complete sense. Because I've been doing this for a really long time. I've heard so many stupid, crazy stories that could have been prevented simply through rules and boundaries with children. Yeah. Uh, and unfortunately, Children are also very psychologically impacted, like by it, you know, yeah. or they have a negative experience and they're just like scared of dogs or something like that. Mm -hmm. Or they can get, you know, because dogs bite as a form of correction. Uh, it's technically not aggression. It's the dog setting a boundary because that's how they will treat their puppies. But we don't have fur to protect their skin, so then you know there can also be a very uh, solid amount of damage done as well. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So that's something that we can cover both just how to go about it safely and correctly, mm -hmm. but then also. Um, uh, learning when to advocate for them and just telling a child no yeah. if they're not going to do so respectfully. Yeah. Okay. And that builds more trust with him mm -hmm. because then he doesn't feel like oh, here's kids again. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. You know, I feel like, that's where he's at right now. It's just like, oh, another person I don't know that wants to touch me. Correct. And I think we need to do a better job about like advocating for him and telling people like, no, like, no, like we don't want you to touch him because there's been times where somebody will like randomly like instead of getting out of the car and we're trying to load him up and they're like, oh, can I touch your dog? And like Miles is already there. Like I can't really tell them no, but sure. like I need to do a better job about that. Sure. And then once you've gotten control over Miles, like he wouldn't even be there. So yeah. it's going to put you, because right, like you said, like right there, it's kind of awkward, right? Because he's like, hey, I'm Miles. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you know, and you're just like, don't touch my dog. Yeah. Like, but he looks so friendly. Yeah. Right he's in, you know, so, so yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, and I, I'll help you with that stuff too, but you can absolutely say no and feel free to be curt because unfortunately people do ignore polite. Yeah. Okay. Um, so in terms of length of time and cost and stuff, um, you'd be like in a six to maybe nine class range. Okay. It just comes down to how much control you want over your dog. Mm -hmm. So think of six classes as walk my dog, go to the park. Nine classes as walk my dog, go to the park, go to restaurants. 12 classes is I do all that stuff, plus I go to the dog beach, I go hiking with my dog, my dog's gonna go on a picnic with me, goes to my friend's house, like I do everything with my dog, okay? So that's like full control. Yeah. Um, so it's like six at minimum, and then you can do more if you want more control, okay? Because the way I look at it is, there's like his needs and wants, and then there's your need and wants, and then I'm like trying to meet in the middle, yeah. and then tell you what can be done in what time frame, sure. okay? So at six classes, the breakdown would be two on heel, we see what does that resolve. Okay. The third class is more, we can work on reactivity. If there's like just some residual stuff, you know, uh, how do we handle tougher situations? If it's like an off leash dog barking at us or whatever, charging us, mm -hmm. um, one class on recall, uh, a class on how to socialize them with children. And then that leaves your six classes like a variable. Okay. okay. So we can either review something that maybe needs to, uh, you, you didn't quite get, you want to try it with a different child or what have you. Mm -hmm. Um, if you did nine classes, uh, same kind of breakdown, but then we have time to cover stationary control, yeah. which is the, you know, I want to go to the, like a brewery and have my dog laying down next to me and not have to worry about him blowing up if the dog walks by. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. The 12 week um, is if you do like everything with your dog, and I know you mentioned the dog beach, yeah. but nine with nine classes, because the only command that has to be awfully reliable is recall. Okay. That's the only command that has to be, otherwise it's pointless. Yeah. Right. So uh, everything else, sit, stay down, come place, heel, can be built to an off-leash reliability or level of off-leash reliability. Whether or not you need it just depends on your lifestyle with your dog. Yeah. So that's why I was like six at minimum, which is mainly for like the problems, yeah. right, that we want to address. Mm -hmm. Nine is we still work on the problems, but we have a bit more time to work on more control. And we can push things still too, even with nine classes. It just comes down to how much progress we're making, okay? okay. Sure. Every case is different. The biggest factor is always the owner. Almost, oh, I should say, almost always the owner. Every yeah. now and then I get a dog that's just, it's an intense case and, and, and the owner's doing their best, but it's just the dog, it's just that intense. Okay. Um, but more often than not, you know, we're getting the results relatively early in, in the program, mm -hmm. uh, which also helps build people's confidence because they're seeing, oh, like this is actually working. Yeah. And it's working in life, like it's working in a real world scenario. Like some, something that like we could, like it can be functional for us again. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, because yeah. you have to see success. Yeah, and that's the hard part, I think, with me, anyways. Like, I don't want to say I'm impatient, but like we do the, we've met with the trainers and done the things, and like I'm not seeing anything yes. different, really. Like, so then, weeks after, and then. So then you just get the mindset of why even bother doing it if it's not going to help. Correct. Yes. Um. So you're gonna get it immediately, and I suggest if you you if you have it, watch a lesson one. Okay. Or actually, if you go to my YouTube channel and I have playlists, mm -hmm. so like there's heel with e collar, you know, recall with e collar, like it's all divided up. Yeah. Um, but there's one called client or dog training highlights, mm -hmm. and you click on that playlist, and there's like maybe 10 to 15 videos of like cases that were like, uh, like um, to show people like it's this efficient, it's this effective. Sure. Okay, like there's like really bad reactivity cases. I'm sure probably cases that are worse than him. Yeah. And you see class one and class two, and the owner's like, it's fucking great, like 180. Yeah. Uh, one client flew up from Austin. The dog's name is Birdie. She's on that highlight reel. Okay. They flew up from Austin, several trainers, behaviorists, lots of drugs um, for the dog. Um, <laughs> uh, no, no progress. Moved to Austin because they lived in Chicago and couldn't walk their dog anywhere. Okay, so they moved to Austin because they had they could have a yard, mm -hmm. you know, similar to Chicago. Yeah. 
but they have business up here, so they have to come up here. So they found me one class. That's awesome. One class. Like, and the guy is just like, Jesse, this is crazy. He's like, we've put so much money into this dog. The dog was five years old, by the way, I believe. Five years old, three to five years old. So they've been dealing with this issue for three to five years. Wow. No one can fix it. And he's like, you fucking come in one class and one ADR dog's behavior. And I go, it's, it's, it's because we're, we're teaching them in a way they understand. Yeah. Okay, because dogs don't understand words. They don't understand a bag on the ground. They don't understand a, a water in the face because yeah, they don't do that to each out. other. Okay. They, they bite each other, yeah. right? So your e-collar is a means of biting your dog, but it has to be done correctly in a way that he understands. Yeah. Yeah. So when you're using, when, when we're communicating with him in a way that he understands how it turns on and how it turns off and when it's communicating, what you want him to do and what you don't want him to do, you start to see that progress, okay? So, and now, uh, if you've seen in the videos, I don't even have to touch the dog really anymore. I coach you through it. Yeah, yeah. I, see, I feel you like do a lot everything. of the sessions are like this, or like you're watching mm -hmm. while they do it. Yeah, I'm talking. Because nice, like I like to be hands on with him, and I feel like he'll be more comfortable with it. Yes, you. because you're the one that's got to live with him. Yeah. yeah. I already know how to train dogs, right? Yeah. So e collar, it's very much common sense based. Um, it's very logical. Once you understand the concepts, it's very easy to just apply them. Mm -hmm. You train as you live your life with your dog. Mm -hmm. So like every time you walk them, that's when you're training. You know, we're not training for 15 minutes in a quiet room and then hoping it one day works in life. Yeah, right. It's you're going out and you're applying the training in real time. Yeah. Uh, you know, if we want to get off leash recall, I tell owners, if your dog has prey drive, let your dog chase that squirrel and then recall away from that squirrel because that's real. Yeah. You know, um, but this is the only tool in my opinion that allows us to do that that way. Um, so yeah, we started doing verbal instruction training in response to COVID because I used to do home to home and then nobody wanted people in their homes. And then also people didn't want to touch stuff. You know, everybody was paranoid about that. Yeah. So then I knew I could train dogs through verbal instruction using this tool, but then I had to prove to people because everybody was skeptical in the beginning. It took me like yeah. two months of people going like, I don't believe it before I got my first post COVID client. And then she did a testimonial video that we posted up. And then after that video, all of a sudden, huh. all these people started coming. And it's worked so great that we've just kept doing it because it's like, well, why even touch the dog if you don't need to? Yeah. You know? Yeah. So for you guys, it's hands-on experience. You do everything from beginning to end. Nothing's tied to me either, which is also a big thing, right? Yeah. Where the dog will behave when the trainer's around. And then when the trainer leaves, they misbehave because the trainer does a lot of the work. Yeah, sure. So this uh, removes me from the equation because he doesn't know it's me giving you instructions. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. I think yeah. that's really helpful because I feel like before we had someone like from Bark Busters come in and he acted like an angel when mm -hmm. she was there. As soon as she left, flipped the switch again. Yeah. So no, I, I like that idea. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, when it comes to getting onto the uh, calendar and stuff, mm -hmm. evenings and weekends are my busiest times okay. because people, most people are nine to five. Yeah. yeah. Um, some are versed to most people. Um, if you have daytime availability, availability, easier to get you in sooner, but Maria would know all that stuff, okay? okay. Uh, please do allow Maria a five to seven business day turnaround time, because since you submitted your request, there have been other requests, sure. uh, previous requests that are signing up, plus my current client list of like 30 something people. Oh my okay? gosh, you're this guy. <laughs> yes, so um, it's kind of like you're back in queue again, and then once you're up, uh, then she gets you on the calendar. Once you're on the calendar, if you have a consistent, uh, like if you don't have like a rotating schedule or something, it's easier because you have your time and yep. then that's your time, okay? Um, if you'd like to help, just skip a step. What you can do is if you know what you would like, whether it be six or nine classes, um, is you would just turn around and email Maria and say, hey Maria, we want nine classes. Uh, this is our availability. Please let us know once you're ready, right? So this way, once you're up in her list, She's not emailing you, waiting for you to, sure. to get your schedule. She's already got it. Yep. Okay. okay, so then she'll send you the contract form for signing up. Uh, she'll get you squared with invoicing. She'll send you the information for the, for the black edition, which you can get on Amazon. If you do so, please test your collar. Make sure it is the correct model. Okay. It will say black edition on it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you can also purchase it through us. I don't care where you get it from. I just care that you get the correct collar. Okay. okay? Um, this one back tomorrow. Yeah, so you want to return that one. Okay. There shouldn't uh, be any issues. You said it's 150 bucks right now, I guess. Yeah, I guess so. Um, yeah, so I've had clients that have bought it and then they show up and it's already a month later. I'm like, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Um, but, um, but yeah, um, any other questions? Um, Cost-wise, like what is it 
What's the difference between like six, nine, or twelve classes? So I know six is a thousand. Okay. Nine, I believe, is like thirteen seventy-five, and then twelve is seventeen twenty-five or something. Ooh, and my prices that. are on my website. Oh, perfect. So please keep in mind that if you do six, and you're like, well, Jesse wasn't lying. Like this actually works, and you want to do another six, right? Is you would do a thousand, thousand. So you'd be 2,000, sure. right? That makes sense. If you do 12 up front, you're saying, hey, we're committed. We want to do 12. You get a cheaper per class rate. It would be 17, 25, sure. for example. Yeah, okay. makes sense. Um, so I don't care if you do six, then three, because people ask that. I go, sure. I was like, but you're just paying the program costs. We're not going to prorate it, okay? Because okay. it helps Maria work my calendar more easily. Because, because yeah. so like if you did six and then signed up for another six, well, that time might be taken now. Yeah. Because if we book some, because you're, so... When you do six, you let's say Friday at five o'clock was open. It worked for you. You took the time. Friday at five o'clock for six weeks plus one would be your week, your time. So seven weeks. Yep. Okay. So if you get sick, not a big deal. We still have that extra week. Okay. Let's say you travel and you miss out on three weeks. You don't miss the classes, right? You don't lose them because you told us, but you use up your priority. So by the seventh week, it's like, hey, we still got a couple classes left over, but we it's a busy time. We have to yeah. book someone. Yeah. Maria would contact you and say like, hey, you've used up your priority, but you still have two classes. What's your availability now so that I can see where I can squeeze you in on sure. this schedule, okay? okay? Yeah, makes yeah. sense. So if you do six and then want to do another, then she's either got to put you somewhere else, um, or you know, if you're lucky and you catch it early enough, she can book it for you. Mm -hmm. um, but that, or there might be a wait. Like we had a client do that and she had to wait a couple of months before she could get back in the calendar because I was yeah. already booked all the time she had. We're all about being proactive. Yeah. So. Okay. <laughs> and uh, the sessions are here? Uh, so we will either be, did you guys come from the suburbs? Yeah, yeah. Julia. Okay. So uh, for my suburb clients, what we can, where we can meet is Palmer Square, which is not too far from here. Okay. okay? It's like eight minutes away. Perfect. So for people coming off the expressway, it just makes it easier for them. Yes. Yeah. Um, so we're outside and we still have stuff going on. If you'd rather, and I mean, uh, it, it's fall now, so it's hard to say, but if it's like, no, we want to be in the busiest environment possible, Oz is the better option, mm -hmm. but the Oz Park is about 15 to 20 minutes into the city in Lincoln Park, okay? Yeah. okay? So it's a trade-off there. Palmer Square can be busy too, it's just hit or miss. Um, like today, uh, it was pretty bland, but like yesterday, it was like super busy, okay? Oh. For some reason, yeah. And it was like a weird time of the day too, and it was still super busy. <laughs> and how long are the sessions? An hour. An hour? Once a week for an hour. And then is it just Monday through Friday or do you do weekends at all? We, I do weekends as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Sweet. Um, and like, let's say we hit inclement weather. Um, yeah. We have my like facility. Wintertime coming. So. Yeah, exactly. So we have my facility space. So, because people often ask like, well, if we're training in your building, is it going to be the same outside? Okay. Again, it's pretty much just common sense. If we're in my building and it's using number 25 and it's doing great, well then outside where there's more distractions, we'd assume his number would be higher. Right, so I give you a methodology to figure out what's the number that we need when we're walking by a parade of dogs. What's the number that we need when we're inside Home Depot, okay? And once you understand, because the collar, what, what I love about e-collar is it's so adaptable to situations, yeah. okay? Yeah. You can really fine tune two things. Is you're, It's not like his number is 35 and that's it, and he's the perfect dog. It's always gonna, it's gonna change. But you'll just know. You're gonna go, oh, here's the, chi the Chihuahua, 85. Right? Oh, we're at the dog beach and there's no dogs. 35. Okay. You know, you just kind of know to go to these things. And as long as you're willing to go there, there shouldn't be an issue. That's the biggest problem. Is people just, they're like, oh, I don't want to go to 85. Yeah. But if you have to. I think that's, um, yeah. that's hard as far as like, I don't want to, I don't want to feel like I'm hurting him, but I know I'm not, so. Right. Remember, dogs bite each other. Like, yeah. you know, this is a dog bite. This is a dog that didn't want to go in the kennel. That was it. Just like looked up and bit me in the hand. So, you know, so. <laughs> Uh, so that's dog, right? Yeah. So uh, obviously the intent here is not to hurt him. It's not to make him worse. We want to make him better. I want to get to the point where you can feel comfortable with your dog, feel confident with your dog, be able to live your life with your dog. And he can, yeah. like you said, go on a trail. That would be nice. And not yeah. have someone say like your dog is wild. Like, you know. <laughs> yeah, so, he's not, I mean, he's, he's only two years old. So I'm like, he's got a long life to live. Oh yeah, he's got plenty of years. Well, we have a long time to like have him. So I don't want him to be like. I don't want him to be like that forever. Like, yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, I, I would say a uh, pretty standard case. Um, I've seen this before and it's unfortunate, but it happens. Yeah. Makes me feel better, honestly. Yeah. No. And then if you like, in terms of, um, if you wanted to open up a social circle of dogs, um, uh, uh, what you've been doing is, is correct. 
walk them first, then into the space to let them socialize. Yeah. If there were, if if he would have an issue with any kind of dog, I would say it's probably going to be a bigger energy, like a more boisterous, yeah. um, like big player type energy. Because if he's kind of nervous of um, of dogs in the first place and they're that much, yeah. that's where you might see some apprehension. Yeah, that's what we saw every time we went to the dog park. There was a Rottweiler there, uh -huh. and well, one this guy was training and training him in German, so I like couldn't understand. Like, what <laughs> yeah, training him. Yeah, yeah. Really doing he wasn't anything. really doing much, but like Miles was like showing us that like he was like terrified of this dog and trying to get away, but oh, yeah. the dog was coming closer. Yeah, just would so, not like, leave him alone. Any kind of big beefy dog like that, like kind of freaks him out. Yeah. Already. Yeah. yeah, and I got a couple friends from work here that have like newer dogs, like or doodles. Yeah, they're like you know one to two years old, and they're always just like, oh, we need to do a dog meet up so you can meet them. And I was like, yeah, we need to wait a little bit. Yeah. I'm just like super nervous about that. Sure, and that's something I can help you with as well. If you'd rather have like if you want to learn a more structured approach of how to socialize them, we can do that as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I feel like. Like, to be honest, with all the friends that keep asking, like, it'd be nice to, like... I know, everybody, everybody that gets a new dog is like, oh, we need to meet him. I'm like, yeah, we'll, we'll get there. Yeah. yeah. Well. Or, like, some of them have always said, like, oh, like, our dog's personalities are so similar. Like, it'd be nice to bring our dog to your house since they're out of state instead of having to board their dog. But Oh, I'm sure. Like, oh, Miles is kind of freaked out, so maybe not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, for sure. That's something we can cover as well. Okay. Uh, that would definitely be put you more at minimum in the nine class range because okay. then we're, we're pushing for more things. Okay. Um, uh, but it, it's up to you. Yeah. Okay. Um, other how questions? Much, how much did you say this help was again? 17, I believe 25. If you go to my website and you go under obedience classes, uh -huh. you'll see a table okay. and it has all our price points. Perfect. Okay. Mind, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> okay. and I think it's under like it says like training, and then you'll see like obedience, you'll see behavior, you'll see you don't want to look under behavior. Okay. Even though this is looking. technically behavior, okay. yeah. Uh, that one is is for my like dogs that want to kill people. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think that's where you were looking. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. it's yeah. like four thousand something. Yeah, dollars. that's what yeah. I think. That's what you were looking at. No. Yeah. No, uh, so with the obedience, we are going to cover behavior. Mm -hmm. uh, the behavior program is for the really, really intense cases where um, it's, 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 a, it's a liability. It's a yeah. yeah. So he'd be fine with the obedience program. Cool. Um, so I believe 12 is about 17 something, and you'll see it all on the, on the website. Okay, because okay. I'd, I'd definitely be interested in doing multiple sessions. Yeah, I think for it's sure. It's something that we really need to focus on. Yeah, I would love to get as many sessions as possible, to be honest. Yeah. I want like really good like control over him. Okay. I it's, think it's always a, like I admire people who have like the dog like that's so like like in control. I guess. Yeah, like you tell him you tell him to sit and that dog is just like <laughs> now. Yeah. yeah, I I would like to have that. So. Okay. Uh, do kick. Uh, bear in mind that of course winter is coming. Yeah. Um. So like let's say because this happens. Um, where clients either lack get lax over the winter time and they, they finished the program before winter and got kind of lazy and they'll email me in the springtime and stuff. I've also had clients who will start their training. So like, let's say you did 12. Yeah. You could do 12 and you could have your first like six or eight classes. And let's say it's like snowing and it's like, okay, we don't train as much because it's snowing. You can postpone your last batch of classes till the spring and or summertime. Oh, so like, awesome. it's like you just do what, you, what you've learned you do what you can, and then you come back when the weather is nicer, and then it makes more sense to actually finish up the program. Sure. Okay. So, I mean, that would, that'd be really nice too. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Because all the, when you do the twelve, you're just saying, Jesse, we're committed to twelve, yeah. right? So I don't care if because I had a client who did six last up the previous summer and then finished the six this past summer, mm -hmm. right? Because they took the winter time to just practice and everything. Like I didn't care. They yeah. paid for my time. They just I just said, you know, please let us know ahead of time. So this way, if you're like, hey, we're only thinking of using six to eight classes, Maria can already kind of format my calendar for that. Sure. Um, and then you come back once you're ready. Uh, but just please do remember that it's on you to contact us when you're ready to come back. Absolutely. Because um, uh, we've had a couple of people who oh, did I that. I remember seeing some of your Instagram <laughs> posts about making sure that you contact us on time. Yeah. So, because of other people who have it and have had to try to write you a bad review for that. Yeah. So, <laughs> so me. yeah, it's whatever. <laughs> yeah, so it's been, as I, I, that's my one thing of getting this big, I didn't want to get this big because 
you get more of those people. Yeah. yeah. You know, like the way I, because it's a process to get to me now, right? Like, so it's like okay. filtering out a lot of people. Mm -hmm. But every now and then one gets through the cracks. Mm -hmm. um, but I was like, well, I'm so far along in my career now, it doesn't really matter anymore. Like, that one. That means you do a great job, though, that people really want to come see you. So, yeah. that's awesome. I do think so. So, <laughs> um, any other questions? I'm good. I don't think so. Thank you so much. For yeah, thank you. Thank you. It was Super a helpful. pleasure. I uh, appreciate you guys making the truck over here. Yeah. Um, so, uh, like I said, you can email Maria again with whatever program you want to go with, and then your availability. Sure. And then once you're back in the, in the queue, she will get in contact with you. Um, if you have any other questions in the meantime, you can shoot her an email, of course, she'll get back to you. And if it pertains to me, she'll send it to me, and then I send it to her, and then she sends it to you. Okay. Um, otherwise, please do check out our that playlist if you just want to kind of get like a, a feel for it. Um, you know, it's the dog training cl client highlights or whatever playlist and or lesson ones are always great to watch as well. Okay. 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 Um, oh, one last question. Mm -hmm. Do we just start ditching this harness now? You can use it because it's, it's um, it, putting him on his flat collar is going to work against you. Okay. It'll put him more in an advantage. Mm -hmm. your, your Front clip harness at least deviates his power a bit, mm -hmm. so it's better than your flat collar in the moment. But then once you start the actual training, you can toss it. Okay. 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 Cool. Maybe we can give my sister. I don't know if they'll fit the chant, but okay. my sister has like a forty-five pound golden noodle. It's probably too big for him, but her dog is really like. He's very friendly, but he um, likes cars. Too much. Too sure. much. Like he likes to change. Lunge at cars that are driving past, and sure. to the point where like. He's like pulling her. Yeah. Yeah, he slipped out of his leash before and just took off down the road. And somehow he made it back home. I guess he just realized or knew where he was. Sure. And like she tried to find him, couldn't find him, drove home, and he was just sitting on the front porch. It's crazy. Yeah. You could do the, she, she could do the front clip harness, or she probably use a gentle leader. Uh, oh, she tried the gentle yeah. leader, and he. <laughs> Just dragging his nose on the concrete like, yeah, the entire time and like, like got a rash or oh, like, sure. cut it. She gets sure. really frustrated by it, and I, but she hasn't really gone to like a trainer or anything. And sure. I keep telling her like, look, that might be the only way. Like she's yeah. tried literally like every harness or gentle leader, everything yeah. with him and it still doesn't work, so. Yeah, no, there's, uh, they're only tools, right? Without the appropriate education, like, mm -hmm. you know. The only reason I said gentle leader is because it, since it does, fit on the dog's face, it gives you that immediate control. Yeah. But yeah, it is resisting the it, it worked it worked when we first got it and then eventually he just like He got so smart that like he knew where our house was in our subdivision and when we would do a lap we would come back and he would sit when that like gentle leader was on until we would take it off. Mm -hmm. And then we would get to do another couple other laps until we took it off of him. <laughs> He's very stubborn. So. That's funny. All right. Anything else? No, no I'm good. So. Thank you so, so much. You're welcome. I'll help you guys out.